very simply explain how to learn web development as an absolute beginner, which level is needed in order to get an entry-level job and how to reach that level. Hey there, I'm Daniela. I'm a web developer with several years of experience working in the field. I worked in startup, I worked in corp, as well as I've been a freelancer. I'm also a semi-self-taught, semi-bootcamp graduate who basically pivoted her career from architecture to tech. And I have some stories to tell. So if you want to hear them out, then stick around. All right, so web development consists mainly of two directions, front-end and back-end. There is also a thing called full stack, which is basically a combination of the two. Simply put, front-end is something that the user can work work with and the back end is something that is kind of like doing all the magic behind the scenes. Well the front end also has a lot of magic but for you as a developer the main distinguish between the two is that the front end is working with the browser and in the browser while the back end is working primarily on the server. Now let's break down the front end. It consists of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. HTML is hypertext markup language, which is basically the skeleton of your website. CSS is cascading style sheets. This is responsible for the styling of the website. So kind of like something that you put on top of the skeleton. And last but definitely, definitely, definitely not least is JavaScript is the function of the whole website. It's the programming language. As a shortcut, you can call it JS, but don't call it Java. Java is a completely different language. HTML and CSS are usually the easier parts to grasp, especially for beginners that come from non-technical backgrounds and have no prior experience with coding. Usually it's because HTML and CSS don't have necessarily the um, heavy lifting that a programming language has, even though CSS can get quite advanced, but I still think that it's different to the challenges that you face when you learn JavaScript or any other programming language. It's also why sometimes as beginners, when we kind of wrapping up the HTML and CSS chapter and ready to move on to JavaScript, we feel like we start from absolute zero because it kind of is. Usually when we talk about web development, we say HTML, CSS and JavaScript and it seems that it's like, okay, first I get HTML, then CSS and then JavaScript. So kind of like it makes you feel like there is this information that you can bring forward with you but it's not really the case. There are separate entities, but they're complementary to each other. And that's why when people get to JavaScript, they feel like we did, but don't. And we also mentioned that there is the second part to web development, which is backend. And backend doesn't work with HTML and CSS. Everything that happens on the backend is written in JavaScript or Node.js. And full stack would be a combination of everything. So once you learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript, you could extend your knowledge to Node.js and be a full stack web developer. Or you can do it vice versa. You can first learn the backend and then extend your knowledge with HTML and CSS. Or you can also focus just on the front end or on the back end. As I'm a front end web developer, I'm gonna be focusing on the front end part. So, what is important to know for a beginner? HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they all come in different forms and shapes. And that's where things like React, Vue, Angular, CSS, not CSS, SCSS, Bootstrap, Tailwind CSS, CSS preprocessors, components, and many, many, many other terms come into play. As a beginner, it can be very overwhelming to hear all those terms and you feel basically like you need to chase after all of them, but no, let me let you on a big secret here. They are all based on the basics. That's right, React, Vue, Angular, they're all frameworks that in their core, they're based on the basic JavaScript, which is also called vanilla JS. SCSS, Bootstrap, Tailwind, UIKit, Material UI, all of those things, they're based in their core on the basic of CSS. So what do I mean by that? Let's take as an example bikes. We have mountain bikes, we have city bikes, we have electric bikes, we have a huge variety of bikes. How do we learn how to ride a bike? We just take one and ride it, right? You take like the most basic one and you learn how to operate it. And then once you got the skill, you jump on any of those bikes, apply your skill and maybe have some tweaks in order to adjust to the vehicle that you chose. But at the core of it, you learn how to ride a bike. As long as you learn the basics, 
you will be set for good because you will be able to apply those skills and this knowledge to any framework that comes your way. It's also worth mentioning that the front-end field is changing very, very, very fast. There are tons of frameworks, libraries, there are so many additions, so many things to, to work with. And if your goal is to get employed, I can tell you that there is most likely going to be discrepancies between different companies in the tech stack that they're using. One company can use React, another one can use Vue, the other one can use Angular, or maybe actually at your work, you will need to work with several of them every day. <laughs> and you can never really guess. So that's why if you learn the basics, you will be able to apply them. Which leads me kind of to another point, don't memorize syntax. There is absolutely no sense in memorizing the syntax and why you should not learn syntax? Because everything changes. <laughs> Tons of libraries, tons of packages, frameworks, as I mentioned already, they usually come with documentation where you can read about the syntax. So really don't bother memorizing the syntax. If you're going to develop one skill, be it learn how to Google. You need to make Google or any other search engine, but I'm gonna use Google as a reference. You need to make them your best friend. You need to know how to communicate with them in the best way possible to get the best result that you want on the first go. I think the main challenge when you learn how to code with prior experience or knowledge is learning to talk to a machine, understand how machines work and that they don't think like humans. That's the main key what you should be focusing on. Don't focus on memorizing the syntax. There are tons of helpers now in every code editor, in Google, Stack Overflow. There are so many answers everywhere. But what's gonna get you further is the logic. Develop the logic, understand how things work, why they work one way or another or why they don't. There are also some other things than HTML, CSS and JavaScript that can be helpful and they're more of a more of an addition to your coding daily routine. For example, NPM or Yarn. There's also a thing called Git and basic terminal commands. If you get the tiny glimpse of those, then you're gonna be set. You don't need again to know them all. You don't need to memorize them. Just know what they're doing and the very basic command of them. Okay, but those are the technical skills. But there is a big thing called soft skills. And I feel that maybe they are not as equally important. I mean, you do need the technical skills, but the soft skills are going to bring you very, very far. So as a beginner, I think one of the most important skills is to have critical thinking. You have to apply the critical thinking to everything you're doing, everything you're seeing, everything you're reading. You need to put yourself in situations where you're going to see how people code. Maybe it's in a meetup, maybe it's from courses, maybe somewhere else, maybe you're reading somebody else's code. You need to analyze everything. You need to make some conclusions for yourself. You need to see why somebody wrote something. And if you get to expose yourself to this kind of situations, then observe how people code, their way of thinking, how they explain why they chose one thing or another. And always ask questions, really. If you don't ask questions, the only person who loses is you. The tech community is extremely helpful. Of course, there are always like people who are not nice, but overall, I think there are many people who would love to help and to answer some questions. Another thing, which is probably not a skill, but worth noting that it's important, is embracing feeling uncomfortable. <sighs> yeah. There is no shame in not knowing something and challenging yourself is the best gift that you can give yourself on this journey. Because no matter how much you know, no matter how much experience you have, you're always gonna find something new, you're always gonna find some bug or some situation that you really don't know how that happened. And the faster you let go of this kind of like shame of being uncomfortable or not knowing something, the faster you're gonna grow and the faster you're gonna learn. Okay, so what do you need to know in order to be qualified for an entry-level job? HTML. Understand the skeleton, understand the semantics of tags, which tags should be used, where and why. 
CSS. Work with the basics of it. Explore the endless possibilities of it. For example, build an extremely simple page, duplicate it, and use different CSS methods in both of them. CSS is a huge field and it has so many different possibilities to solve a problem, so there is no really a point where you know the whole of CSS. But as long as you're aware of the possibilities, how you can tackle one issue or another, you're good. JavaScript. Basics, basics, basics. Learn if statements, switch statements, for loops, learn functions, how to pass arguments, learn data types. Basically learn everything that vanilla JavaScript has to offer. And once you feel not entirely comfortable, but a little bit more comfortable, you can move on to a framework like React.js or Vue.js. As a bonus tip, especially for a beginner, you would increase your chances by knowing best practices, knowing what clean code is and applying it to your code. This will impress any employer. All those things can be great things for A, for yourself to learn coding, B, for your portfolio to show you've been doing things and you've been coding things on your own, C, to manage the expectations of your future employer and to show them on which level you currently are. And that is a very, very important point. But that's also a whole separate topic, which I'll cover in a separate video. I hope this was helpful, that you didn't get overwhelmed with all the things that I said, and that it somehow made a more clear picture of how pursuing web development as an absolute beginner can look like. If you have any further tips, please let me know in the comments, share it with the community. We can all benefit from sharing our experiences and tips. And for now, I wish you a good day, evening, night, wherever you are. Stay safe and see you next time. Bye.